Hey everybody, it's Prelete, and today we're checking out Synergy, an upcoming city building game with a very distinct focus on ecology unlike anything I've ever seen before. Now this game has been on my most anticipated upcoming games list for a couple of years now, so a huge thanks goes out to the developers for providing me with early access to their Next Fest demo ahead of Next Fest next week. Now, I've already played a bit of the game myself, so I'm familiar with some of its mechanics, but we will be starting a fresh game here so I can introduce you to them as we play. If you like what you see here, please don't hesitate to go and wishlist the game on Steam, as that's a great way to support independent developers especially because of how visibility works on Steam. Apart from that, if you enjoy this video, consider hitting the like button, maybe sharing it, and perhaps subscribing to the channel for more similar videos about similar games in similar genres. But that's enough of an introduction, folks. Let's go ahead and dive on into a new game. And the first thing you'll see is that we have just the one campaign available to us. Again, this is the Next Fest demo build. And within that campaign, we're going to have one scenario available to us. It immediately makes me curious about the structure of the game and if it's going to be similar to, say, Frostpunk, where you have multiple scenarios of different difficulties. As we dive into No Man's Land, you'll also notice that the one scenario we have available to us can be won at three different levels, bronze, silver, and gold, so there's an element of replayability built into it. Anyway, enough about that, let's dive on in. So, a group of exiles, having to leave the desiccated oasis that had cradled them until then, must rebuild in spite of their meager resources. However, the climate challenges them at every turn, and the desert overflows with strange and dangerous mysteries. Let's begin. An End to the Wandering for two generations, our community lived in the heart of an oasis, protected from the hazards of the outside world. But this oasis, like all the others, dried out and died. We were forced to leave our home. But all is not lost. Among the stretches of sand, we reach the shores of new lakes. Their waters, no matter how foul, promise to be life-saving. If we can only treat them. First things first, we're immediately introduced to just how toxic this planet actually is, where even the water has multiple steps needed before it can be potable. So let's go ahead and pan on down to our lake over here that looks more like slurm than it does water and establish our water processing facilities. Now the game wants us to do it over here, but I'm actually going to go ahead and do it up over here. So we're a little bit closer to some of these trees and the shade that they provide. That'll come in handy later. So let's go ahead and build ourselves a pontoon to actually extract the uh, toxic water. Pop you down over here, buddy. Now let's go ahead and establish a retention basin where that toxic water gets stored and then turned into clean water. So the retention basin will pop up uh, right next to the pontoon. We don't have to overcomplicate things. Again, goods do have to be physically moved from point to point, so proximity and distance does make a difference. We'll go ahead and pop you down over here, I think, so that we have uh, you know room for a road, I suppose. And let's get our uh, water tower established where? Maybe... A little bit further up, because I'm thinking we'll need a couple of pontoons and retention basins down over here. Uh, don't want to waste any room, because as, as you'll notice, you know these guys have some limitations as to where they can be placed. Same thing goes for the retention basin. So I don't want to waste that space on something like the water tower that doesn't have that kind of restriction. So let's put the water tower, um, sure, right up over here, and we'll get some roads built as well. Get these trails down there and uh, down here as well. Just to start building our, our, our grid. I should note, by the way, this game is, if memory serves, entirely hand-drawn, which blows my mind. I find it absolutely gorgeous. The color palette is just tremendous. The, uh, the, 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 the inking is, is, is lovely. The animations, my goodness, I am in love with this game's aesthetic. Uh, and I just wanted to mention, I'm pretty sure this is entirely hand-drawn, um, but... If someone knows better, feel free to correct me, but I'm, I'm fairly certain on that. Let's go ahead and get some citizens assigned to the pontoon. We just need the one there. I'll wait until everything's built up, and we're going to follow the tutorial, though I'm going to take some side steps, taking into consideration, you know, what's to come uh, as best as I can. Let's go ahead and speed time up a little bit so this construction doesn't take as long as it's taking right now, and uh, we'll get all this up and running. We'll soon be introduced to the idea of... Uh, well, all the ecological aspects I was talking about. It's its fascinating stuff. Right now, we're just dealing with the uh, concerns with water, but uh, all these plants around us that look so juicy and fruitful, uh, you know, they prove to be problematic in their own ways at times as well. Now, let's slow things down as we assign two citizens, sorry, to the pontoon and one to the retention basin, and that should allow us to quickly uh, start processing our, our, our water. Speed time up just a little bit at least, so we make some progress here. And away we go. Excellent. So our water treatment structures have been set up. And we now have a water treatment infrastructure and the foundations for a healthy, sustainable irrigation system. However, 
The seasons come and go, severe and unpredictable. We risk disaster if we harvest only what is sufficient for immediate consumption. To keep our buildings running smoothly, we need to store enough clean water to prepare for drought. Of course, seasons are going to be a thing in a game like this, and in this particular case, we can actually see what's coming up in the form of cycles. So uh, every cycle lasts about 40 days, and uh, every 40 days you might get a shift in temperature and climate, and that might impact what's available to you uh, or not. So let's go ahead and build a second retention basin and add two citizens to that as well. Sounds good. So let's get a retention basin built over here. And as soon as that's built, we'll go ahead and assign the two citizens, and we just have to obtain 20 clean water at the same time. Now, if we take a look at the pontoon, you'll see that we collect 10 water every two days at 50% efficiency. If we were to add two more citizens to this pontoon, we would creep up to 100% efficiency and gather water every one day. So uh, again, balancing how many citizens are working any particular you know, set of buildings comes into play over here where you're keeping an eye on the efficiency of resource gathering, but also keeping an eye on the fact that you have multiple buildings that need to be fully operational to run an efficient society. So let's go ahead and take this back down to two. So we're following the game's instructions still. Let's take you up to one as well. And now we should be in the process of obtaining some clean water. Yeah, in about eight days time, we'll get our uh, 20 clean water. We're at speed four, so we'll leave it at that. And the water tower, as you saw, temporarily opened up as it had a bit of clean water, but I think that immediately got consumed, and so it's closed up and, and dried up again. So we'll give it a second, we'll get that uh, 20 water in there, and we should be good to go to the next step. Now, speed 4 is the highest we can go to. I do wish it went one step higher, but that's only at the beginning. When things start to get a bit more intense, you're, you're not going to be at speed 4 uh, nearly as often as, uh, as at the beginning. There's 10 clean water, and in a couple more days we'll have another 10. Ah, no, perfect, 20. What's next? The Oasis' inhabitants have slept for too long under an open sky, separated from the ravages of the climate only by a stretch of canvas. We need to house them in permanent buildings. To do this, we'll need materials and warehouses to store them in. Piles of rock likely to suit our needs can be found all over the area. Best show good judgment in using them. Again, resources are going to be somewhat limited in our vicinity, and eventually the map opens up so we can explore other points of interest on the planet, but until then, at least, we have to be very wary of how we use our resources. So let's go ahead and gather some of these rocks so we can build some houses. Uh, rocks are all situated down over here. And as you can see, there are different biomes and each of the different biomes has different kinds of plants and resources available on them. But let's go ahead and focus on these rocks. and Let's go ahead and withdraw this rock over here. Now, the reason why I stress the word withdraw there is because there are a few different ways of gathering resources, and I find that to be an extremely interesting touch. We'll get into that a bit more when the mechanics present themselves, but for the time being, as we're gathering rocks, we are withdrawing them, and you'll notice that uh, they get completely removed as they get withdrawn. You might be able to tell what I'm hinting at there as the uh, alternative to withdrawing resources, but let's leave that aside and back up over here. We can establish a warehouse, I suppose. We don't want to Take it all the way out there so people have to bring things over um, from the warehouse to build. You know, they should extract and just drop it at a warehouse. Yeah, sure. Let's pop the warehouse down over here. Let's rotate you a little bit so you're uh, aligned like so. And yeah, pop you down over here. Sure. I'm, I'm considering the distances to where our housing is going to be because there are uh, ranges that we have to take into consideration. But I think they should be fine for the small warehouse and hopefully people will haul stuff over. Again, as is standard with these kinds of games, anybody who is not employed at a certain location uh, is free to sort of haul stuff. So anyone who's not doing any other job is free to kind of go around and pick stuff up and, and drop it off elsewhere. But yes, we'll gather the 30 boreal rock and uh, get our warehouse built as well. Yeah, oh, they're transferring stuff from the starting storage, which has, you know, some bark, some tree trunks. We, we, we got some stuff over here, uh, but not enough to sustain us for the entire tutorial, obviously. All right. Time for housing. Now, housing works interestingly because uh, people need to get their goods from somewhere. Uh, in a lot of other games, you know, it might be a marketplace, for example, but with uh, with Synergy, it's a seller. So sellers have limited ranges that they can serve, and so houses need to be within that seller's range to actually be able to uh, well, provide it to the people. Um, all right, so with that done, let's go ahead and establish our initial housing over here. We'll need, what, our seller first. Let's go ahead and pop seller down where? I feel like I should move you down over here. In line with the warehouse. I love the grid as well. It makes it a lot easier to plan. Uh, maybe pop this down over here. 
We can get pretty deep into this lush area with our uh, with our housing then. I can put it on this side, line it up with a water tower instead, perhaps. You know what? Let's let's keep it on this side. Alright, let's pop you down. Over here. Cool. Get the road down as well. Trying to maintain some sense of order, I suppose. And then we'll go ahead and establish our housing in this general area to start with, I think. Uh, we don't have to be too far away from the cellar. It doesn't produce any kind of pollution or anything like that that we have to worry about. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our housing options. We have a few different types of buildings. The rudimentary tent has a capacity of two, very small building. Then we have three different kinds of stone housing. Each one is, well, they're, they're all exactly the same except for aesthetically. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop which one down. Do I like that one? Do I like this one? I mean, I like all of them. Let's go with... Let's go with this one. This one, I don't know. I kind of like the, the top on this one. Uh, so how do we want to place you? We need three houses. All right, let's go... Um, we need a line down that way. Line you up to this. One, two, and then the tree gets in the way. Oh, I'm going to kick myself for the, the placement, aren't I? No regrets. Let's go. Pop you down there. Pop you down there. I'm, I'm not going to go for any kind of perfectionism here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that to me or to you. Let's pop you down there. We have room for a fourth up there. We don't have to have road connections to our houses, just to be clear. Roads make people move a little bit faster, but it's not a necessity, which is uh, nice. You can pick and choose when you do and don't want roads. But we'll get this going for the time being, and hopefully I haven't shot myself in the foot by being so close to these trees. Anyway, speed time up. Keep things going. As you may have noticed during the uh, work there, we entered into the next cycle. So it's been, uh, well, it was 40 days of cycle one. Now we're in day four of cycle two. Another 36, well, 35 now days to go. And the next cycle will also be temperate season. The most magnanimous climate we can hope for. A few clouds shield us from the sun's rays and water can be drawn or filtered without too many losses from evaporation. Most plants blossom during this season. You can already see how this is gonna be an important consideration as we get our life-saving curiosity. The supplies we carried with us are dwindling by the day, but picking the region's strange thorny fruits is risky business, and eating them is even riskier. Before collecting anything, we have to rule out any danger in exploiting these plants. Our scientific knowledge is limited, but the old distiller at the Oasis has sufficient equipment to carry out basic chemical experiments. By providing him with a mobile mo workspace, we can begin our botanical studies. This is where things start to get really interesting. All right, so, Environmental analysis is essential in understanding all this flora that surrounds us and understanding what is safe, what is dangerous, and what can be consumed in what ways. So let's go ahead and establish our uh, field lab first. Let's slow time down a little bit. Uh, and, and where should I establish this field lab? I wonder if I should keep it maybe a little far away from some of the housing uh, because this will be like our, our water collection. Um, this is where we'll maybe do industrial stuff if need be. And we'll have like knowledge and sciences maybe in this like massive desert area. Sure, let's do that. So let's go ahead and get uh, this path laid out over here. We'll have some, we'll have a bit of a gap over here. We might fill it with decoration or something later. Let's get this coming down uh, this way. And let's go ahead and establish our, where to go? Understanding the world. What a tab, eh? What other game has this tab in a city building game? Um, field lab. Let's go ahead and establish you. Um... Sure, let's pop you down over here. Do that real quick, speed time up a little bit. And we want a picker's cabin as well. So for resource extraction, get the picker's cabin set up over here. And actually, I think we'll set up... All right, we'll do just the one for now. We're going to need two eventually. Uh, I'm going to follow the tutorial guidelines as, uh, as closely as possible. But let's get this picker's cabin set up and we can start uh, establishing you know, some food supply. And that's why we're chasing after moisture pods. Field lab is done. Let's go ahead and assign a single citizen for the time being. Now let's go ahead and assign some tasks. We're going to analyze using surface analysis, one of, I believe, three types of analysis that'll be available in the full game. We just see two available here, but I think it was supposed to be three. I, I could be mistaken. Either way, we're going to do surface analysis, which is the most sort of baseline level of analysis. We're going to do it to these guys. We're gonna do it to these guys. We're gonna do it to what else? Go ahead and uh, queue up. Can I not queue more? Oh, interesting. All right, fair enough. I guess I can only queue so many at a time. We're going to queue up uh, these cinder sprouts as well. And let's take a look at the cinder sprout really quickly. Slow, slow time down a little bit first. As we look at the cinder sprout, you can see that uh, we can withdraw some resource from it. We don't know what. 
if we turn our attention instead to the sharp bush, which hasn't been analyzed yet. I thought it would have been. Come on, get to it, buddy. I guess we're operating kind of slowly here. He's arrived. Okay, he's analyzing now. So if you look at the sharp uh, bush over here, you'll see we can withdraw, we can prune, and we can pick. And once the research here is done, we should be able to tell in a moment's time, there's our analysis report, what each of those actions would give us. So with the sharp bu uh, bush, if we withdraw, we get the uh, moisture pods and we get these sticks. If we pick, we only get the moisture pods. And if we prune, we only get the sticks. You can only do one to any uh, plant or any source, let's call it, before it goes to the beginning of its life cycle. And it has to go through its life cycle again before you can do either the same thing or a different thing. So for example, if I were to pick from the sharp bush, it would go to its beginning stages of, of, of life. It would take some time to grow to full size, and then I could pick it again for some additional moisture pods. Or I could switch, I could go from picking to pruning, and the next time around, you know, we'll get the sticks instead. Alternatively, I can simply withdraw it to get both of those resources. However, that destroys the source. So it will not go through its life cycle ever again. It's gone for good. So you have to kind of pick and choose and, uh, and decide, are you in an emergency situation where you need everything all at once? Or are you willing to wait for, you know, a, a, a renewable source of either resource? Well, both resources technically, but one per life cycle. It's interesting stuff. It's very different from anything I've ever seen um, before. So let's go ahead and use our picker's cabin to go ahead and pick these moisture pods from here, from here, from here, and from here. Now you've analyzed one, you've analyzed them all. That's that's how it works. So now we know moisture pods are available from all these guys. Let's go ahead and select a few actually to pick and we'll set some aside to a prune because we'll eventually need sticks as well. And like I said, every life cycle, you can only do one or the other. Let's go ahead and make sure we've actually assigned citizens to the picker's cabin. So we're we're actually picking. And otherwise, we are now looking at the sunshade tree as well. And you can see they've got traits. Wooden, shady. This one's sick. Explains its color compared to this one. That's poor. It's not doing very well either. Are any of you guys doing all right? No. So they must not be... Uh, they must not have all their needs met. And those are highlighted down over here. But we have no idea because we haven't analyzed these plants. If we look at the sharp bush... Even still, we have no idea because that's probably an extra layer of analysis. Can't just be done with a surface analysis. Um, but let's at the same time go ahead to our field lab and add a few more surface analysis jobs. Let's get these guys analyzed. Let's get these guys analyzed. These guys too, sure, why not? I think that'll probably cover all of our bases for now. Another analysis report has come through. Huh. I didn't notice that this was in French previously. Either way. By cutting this massive tree down, we'll be able to saw its trunk and use its bark. That'll give us tree trunks and bark. Good construction material. But the only option with these trees is to withdraw them. You can't pick, you can't prune. That's the only option you've got there. Good to know. All right. Some more analysis. Good stuff. These guys are hopefully out picking. Uh, I, see, I see this one's been picked, so they are making some progress. Ah, cool. They're coming in from further away first. Fair enough. I mean, I would personally start with these ones that are closest to me. They have been selected, but hey, you do you, I suppose. Yeah, we're coming through. Good stuff. Looks like we have a couple of uh, homeless citizens. So why don't we go ahead and build that additional house? Sure. Kind of wish I'd not rotated this one 90 degrees. It is what it is, though. Too late. No regrets. These riverbank fingers are growing. As you can see, this one just sprouted, I guess is the right word. Once these guys get analyzed, they're particularly interesting. I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. But we've received an analysis report about the cinder sprout. Here again, if we gather, rather, sorry, if we withdraw, we get bark. If we pick, we get bark. If we prune, we get cinder kernels. So it's not like one size fits all kind of a thing where withdrawal will always give you everything. It, it, it is different. And you can see the cinder sprout produces fruit with an unpleasant taste, but numerous medical applications. We can harvest them by pruning the shrub. So again, a bit of a hint as to like, the various ways in which you can use the resources you've got. I'm completely enamored by this mechanic and this system and how deep it is. So, you know, I apologize if I'm being a little overbearing and gushing a little bit too much, but I think it's absolutely fascinating. I can't think of a single game uh, that's done this, at least in recent past, and, and made, you know, this kind of analysis and, and 
and, and consideration when it comes to being in you know, a, a hostile environment. I don't know. I think it's absolutely fascinating. I absolutely love it. Uh, and it makes resource gathering, something as simple as resource gathering, has been made a bit more complex by adding this extra layer to it. I think it's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build a second picker's cabin. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take that extra step because I want to show you something you can probably already predict, but the game's beating me to the punch. Time to refine some resources. So as it is with any, you know, colony management or city building game, resources get converted into other resources to get better benefits out of them. Um, you can unlock some of these options through research. Uh, you can, well, you'll see as we go through it. It's fairly, you know, status quo for, 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 for games like this. Um, but let's go ahead and first build that picker's cabin. I can let the game stop me. Go ahead and pop you down over here, sure. Uh, and let's go ahead and build a kitchen and a forge. So, there's the industrial element. Let's go ahead and get our road all the way out to here. Feels like the right place. I mean, this just looks like where industry should be happening, right? Let's go ahead and get our uh, resource refining tab to get the forge built over here. Now, this will give us tools, um, which should provide us with, uh, with better work rates. Let's go ahead and pop you down over here. Sounds good to me. And let's go ahead and get a kitchen built as well. Now, picking is where all the food kind of arrives. From there, it would get take, taken to the kitchen, where we get refined into, you know, simple meals, for example, and then shipped over to the cellar, where we would store the simple meals. Eventually, full meals, hopefully, but simple meals for starters. So, the kitchen, I think, makes sense to pop down over here or over here. I'm going to put you down over here, so you're sort of halfway between uh, where the food is picked and stored and then where it's cooked and stored. So, sure. Um, I want to let you out like this. No, the tree's in our way. That tree is quite sick anyway. I wonder if I tear it down so I can I can lay you down like this. Sure. You know what? Let's go ahead and withdraw. Sorry. Withdraw you. Why not? Withdraw you. There we go. We'll get that. We'll get the kitchen placed down over there. Good stuff. And here's our analysis report from what? The Riverbank Finger. It's possible... Okay, so this is the one I find interesting. It's possible to cut down the Riverbank Finger and harvest its seeds but workers will be exposed to the toxic spray the plant produces. Sickness and health is a consideration in this game, and it's interesting to see things like this where I imagine, I suspect, that there's a mechanical impact as to, you know, sure, you're able to get these seeds that you need for other things, but you better have good health care because otherwise people are going to fall sick. Um, anyway, thought that was interesting, and over here as well, if we prune the plant, we'd kill it. So don't prune it, or are there times when you would want to prune it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why you would simply want to kill the plant and not gain any resources in return. Uh, does it prevent the spread of toxicity or something? Might be a mechanic we get introduced to later, but I've not seen anything yet. Uh, but yeah, could be dangerous to, to withdraw these seeds, at least as far as the um, you know, modal window they're suggested. Now with this picker's cabin, what we're going to do is we're going to get them trimming. You can see the icons over top of the resources changes to represent what you'd actually get. And again, I can swap these out so we're doing the different thing um, with with the uh, with the with the plant. Oh, I, I guess with a sharp bush we can prune it at any point in time. So you'll want to pick and prune. But once we get uh, once we get it pruned, we just give this guy a second. Hopefully, he'll be done in one swoop. It pops back to its uh, growing stages as opposed to being harvested or being adult so there you go let's go ahead and add a few more items here though because obviously once it's growing it won't uh, be able to produce uh, fruit as quickly let's go ahead and prune guys sure and i could add some of these guys as well to get some of their uh their cinder kernels i suppose yeah that's an option Usually you want to pick these guys because they provide bark. So let's go ahead and get the pickers picking down over here. That's good construction material. Um, don't pick that. Oh, that's a cinder sprout. We could pick it if we want to, but we'll leave it be for now. All right, where was I? Uh, forge is being built. It's still being built, fair enough. Let's go ahead and place our kitchen because we've taken that tree down now. So pop the kitchen down over here as intended. We need some more boreal rock, so let's go ahead and extract some. Oops. Get, get these guys. Sure. And let's speed them up as well. Another analysis report, this time from the Riverbank Finger. 
Oh, I must have given two orders to investigate these guys. We didn't learn anything new with the second investigation. We're all good there. Is there anything else left to investigate? These cabbage shrubs, I suppose. Edible, stinky. Well, those are certainly traits. So we are taking a look at the sunshade tree. Let's also take a look at... Guys. And these guys look different as well. Nope, they're the same. Is that everything? Have we analyzed it? No, we got these giant guys back over here. Oh, that might be everything. There's the sunshade tree. Again, all we can do is cut it down. So I've, I've, uh, I've analyzed it twice by mistake. Once the one that had yellow leaves, because I thought that was something else by mistake. We're good now. We're good now. All right, the forge is built. Want to get tools required in complex manufacturing processes. Tools can be produced at the forge. Let's go ahead and get one citizen. Let's get two citizens working the forge. And we'll get two working the, um, the kitchen once it's done as well. Go ahead and get a couple people there. We need for the simple meal, we need what? Moisture pods, vegetables, and water. Close enough to all the above, I think. And cabbage shrub. All right. By uprooting this shrub, we can harvest the fibers developing in its dried leaves and collect its edible vegetable in one go. Alternatively, pick the vegetables, prune the fibers. Cool. Well, we'll need vegetables for, uh, for the kitchen. Let's make sure we are picking... Some of these vegetables up, eh? Go. We don't need fibers yet, so we'll just focus on the picking for the time being. All right, kitchen. We got two people working. Resources are coming through. So down over here is where you'll see the input inventory. So it'll be in this case water, vegetables, and moisture pods in whatever order. And here you'll have the output inventory, which in this case will be the simple meals and rotten resources, waste, biodegradable waste can be a natural consequence of our work processes or a product of poor resource storage. However, it can find use within a composter and regenerate our farmable land. So it's not, it's waste, but it's not waste waste. You know what I mean? What's this analysis report? Oh, I did two cabbage shrubs. Keep doubling down. These, this, uh, this scientist must be really annoyed at me. It's like, I already looked at this plant. Why am I, why am I going back here? All right, beginning of a new cycle. Got ourselves a new child. And every time we complete one of these um, tutorial stages, we actually get additional population. I don't know if you've noticed that uh, little uh, note, but we've been getting more people coming through, I suppose, more nomads settling down with us. I want to point out, by the way, really quickly, we have, in a few cycles, our first dry season. Tough times await. Surviving will require all our ingenuity. Most plants wilt away during the season, and wells and retention basins alike dry up faced with the heat. The daily grind is harder to bear for our citizens, who risk heat stroke if no precautions are taken. Now, I just noticed that this retention basin is... Why are you doing so poorly? You're okay. You're operational. I guess I could add one more person over here. That we're producing water a bit more quickly. It'll take, what, one and, a, one and three quarter days or so? That should keep flow between these two going. And the water tower has, what, 190 out of 20 requested. Hopefully, hopefully that's enough. I wonder if I should... We'll keep an eye out for it. Maybe in the next cycle or so, we need to double down on our pontoons or something. But kitchen is done. It's got two people assigned. It is waiting for vegetables. I should have been picking vegetables earlier. Too bad I wasn't. Down over here, we've got some vegetables, some rotten resources. Oh, do we not have anybody hauling? That might be it. So one less picker. And down over here. Two people at the forge. We have two available citizens. Oh, we're missing sticks. Well, we should be acquiring some. Yeah, they're coming through just slowly. Let's go ahead and speed time up. Might want to pick some more, actually. Or not pick, but uh, prune. I've got all these up over here for pruning. Add some of these to our pruning list. And what is this? These mushrooms can be cut down at the stem in order to harvest them in their entirety. So once they're gone, they're gone. They provide us with mushrooms. Fair enough. A very limited number of those, I guess. And you can see the map is quite limited. I mean, it's not a very... I mean, it's, it's a big map, but it's not an infinite map. You know, resources are very limited. Uh, and eventually, when the world map opens up, you'll get to see where you might be able to get resources from elsewhere. What's the deal over here? You're, you're topped up. Why are these resources not being taken away? Because you're just too far away to store vegetables. I was hoping they'd be taken to the... Uh, 
kitchen directly, but I suppose... Oh. Get picked up. So other things are being picked up to be taken to the cellar. I'm gonna keep an eye on the movement of goods here. So he just dropped off some vegetables. He just picks them up and took them to the kitchen. Okay, fair enough. So it is happening, but I guess they're waiting for certain thresholds to be crossed before they move the goods around. Uh, but yes, this kitchen is operational. The tools are being made as well. I can go ahead and reduce the number here because we finished the objective. Let's bring it down to just the one citizen, bring another person up to uh, haul stuff around. So that's what was slowing things down up over here. And it's very important to maintain that balance. Very important to maintain that balance of people doing various jobs versus hauling. But we should be done soon. The one thing that uh, throws me off is uh, WASD doesn't move the map around. It's shortcuts for some of these. Use the arrow keys to move them around. Uh, and the mouse is hold down right click and drag to pan or hold down middle mouse to drag and, clan, uh, uh, drag and pan. Uh, but right click is also deselect. So sometimes I end up like accidentally deselecting. Throws me off a little bit. So if you're wondering why that's happening, that's why. <laughs> happened a couple times now i figure i should explain why uh, but we are almost done another two and a half days to get the food ready again i could add another citizen here bring that timeline down a little bit make sure that people stay fed but we've done our job so far civil engineering we have enough to ensure our survival at least for now but survival alone doesn't keep citizens motivated many are already thinking what's next toil and work every day to collect my ration and my drop of water if we're to keep citizens motivated and enable the community to truly live again it's high time we began thinking of this camp as a genuine city. We need to plan and build communal living spaces designed for conviviality and recreation. All right, good stuff. Separately, you'll see that four additional adults have joined the city. Just wanted to point that out this time around that we are a growing population. So time to meet people's basic needs. First things first, if people don't get water or food, they'll start suffering from malnutrition and dehydration. Uh, this then eventually evolves into weakening, which is a type of sickness that can be fixed at the infirmary. So that's one thing to be concerned about. Uh, ultimately, being uh, unwell for too long will result in the death of citizens. They can starve to death, they can dehydrate, they can you know, suffer from heat stroke, all kinds of stuff will kill citizens. So you have to be very careful of that, obviously, as it's the case with any other sort of survival city builder, right? Uh, separately, we're being introduced to the concept of districts. I find this to be very cool. So, survival is ensured. Time has come to make things a bit more like a proper city. If we build squares, we can start designing districts. There are multiple types of squares available and several districts selectable per square, each with its own specific qualities. Buildings belong to the district attributed to the nearest square. They have a certain radius within which you have to work, and you can use those buildings to actually improve the district's score. They just have to match, like the building type has to match the district type, and it'll contribute to the district's score. Um, and then each district will also have access to special buildings uh, that you will be able to you know, use to enable other opportunities. So let's go ahead and slow time down a little bit and build a cultural square, complete a social district, and give it a district score of 200. So let's take a look at our, I believe, population. We want a cultural square. And we want to pop it down where? I'd like to pop it down close to where these houses currently are. There's trees in my way, but I don't want to cut down the tree. i put it on the other side of this tree, I suppose. Hopefully that's not too far away. Sure, let's pop you down over there. And let's get a road. Oh, come on. Up and over. Again, we don't have to put down the roads, but that'd be nice. We'll have a bit of a room, a bit of a bit of a gap over here, but I think I know what I'll do with that. Let's get this thing built first. Bring the resources over. Let's go ahead and withdraw some more in case we need them. Again, very limited. I feel like we're running out. Oh yeah, we don't have that much left, eh? <laughs> Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Nothing to be concerned about, hopefully. Yeah, we are building. Speed time up over here. That done. This sunshade tree is new, isn't it? I don't I don't remember it being there. Maybe it was, maybe I'm just forgetting, but it feels new. Kitchen is fully operational. That feels good. The pickers are picking away. We have how many citizens available? Four. Alright. I know that sounds like enough, but uh, we're going to need to assign citizens to some of the new things we'll be building shortly, right? So those four will uh, we'll get busy real soon. 
We have uh, some homeless citizens as well. I should take a look at that. But first, we finished our cultural square, and there's the radius within which it uh, provides its its uh, opportunities. Let's call it. Let's change it from a historic district to a social district, and uh, that will allow us to. Well, let me let me cancel that for a second here. Let me go ahead and slow time down. Because I want to show you how each house has well-being, socializing and leisure, cultural access, and places of knowledge as four bars that they want filled up to fulfill their satisfaction. Satisfaction, in turn, um, impacts your city prosperity, and uh, that's, a, that's a major factor of like your, your, your score, basically. So, that's why you might want different kinds of districts. Historic district increases culture production within the district uh, by 50%. Uh, in a creative district, the maximum amount of culture points obtainable by district homes rises to 30. Uh, but with a social district, which is what we're going to build, the maximum amount of socializing and leisure points obtainable by district homes rises to 30. So now you know what that's referring to when I go ahead and establish our social district, which will uh, which will require us to have three stone houses. We already have that. And a canteen. So let's set that down and find a place to pop our canteen. Can I? Ah. It'd be great UX to be able to actually click on that and automatically go into the canteen placement. But uh, instead, we shall head down to population and pop a canteen down where? Over here, perhaps? That's ah, just too wide, eh? All right, let's go ahead and pop you down over here then. Try and line you up to the cultural square. Again, like I said, I'm not going to be a perfectionist here because that's going to slow everything down to a crawl. I will avoid that as best as possible. All right, we've got both of our retention basins working. That's good. As many citizens as they can have. Again, still wondering if I should add another pontoon. How much water do we have right now? 230 in stock. The seller has 38. All right, fair enough. Seller can reach out over here as well. I could put down a few more houses, right? I need at least one more. Leave that tree over there. So I have one, two, three, a little bit closer to the water. Do a different one, or the same one? Yeah, variety is a spice of life, sure. Let's pop... Not exactly what I wanted, is it? The one of the road to go down here. Oh, you're killing me. This game, like, tempting me to get rid of some of these trees. But the reason why I don't want to is because... Uh, having shade is a part of, 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 of providing well-being. So I'd like to keep the uh, the shade around if possible. It's something we'll learn later, but I already know it's coming, which is why I've planned ahead a little bit. Dang, where do I want to put these houses down? Like, I could get rid of this tree, or I could build around this tree, I suppose. Like, if I go ahead and, let's see, the cellar goes that far. Fair enough. So I won't need another cellar if I extend you over to here. And, uh... Get some additional housing down. One, two, three. Sure, built around the tree. Yeah, start with just the one. We don't need all three just yet. Just a few homeless people, right? Let's home them, and let's get this thing built. Speed time up a little bit. Way. I gotta get into the habit of using the middle mouse to pan the, the, the map around. We're still lacking some vegetables. Get an extra citizen over here. We can't have the kitchens stop. How many simple meals do we have? 56. I wonder... Uh, where can I tell if that's enough? All right, there we go. So water. We consume <laughs> as as the cycle flips to the next one. So again, we have one more cycle before we hit the dry season. If we take a look at water, we consume 76 units of clean water per cycle. So we should be fine in terms of water. In terms of food, we consume up to 76 units per cycle as well. Uh, at least now with the number of, 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 of citizens we have right now. Um, so we should, be, we should be fine. I think we're operating okay. I think. Up over here, the canteen is good to go. Let's go ahead and assign a citizen. You'll be converting simple meals into culture. Culture is going to fill up the culture access bar for our uh, for our homes. Um, down over here at the culture square, we're all good. Beauty. Now we just need to reach a score of 200. How can we do that? We can go ahead and establish some wells, sun awnings. We could have a kitchen in the district. So, you know, I could opt to destroy this one and pop one down next to the canteen instead. Uh, more housing, tables... T-bars, sure. Couple options. Couple options. Retention basins and production buildings would take away. 
Ooh, having these plants adds to it, actually. I didn't realize that previously. Uh, okay, sure. Let's go ahead and get, what, some benches, perhaps? Yeah. So over to population. Pop a couple of benches down. Let's put one down. Time to get into decoration mode, I suppose. Pop one down there. Pop one down. And there we go. Down there. Is this lined up? Yeah, so that's lined up. That's lined up. We can maybe also get uh, street lamp going. I mean, the street lamps, like the benches and the street lamps don't do too much. I need like the sun awning, for example. Let's go ahead and pop a sun awning down. There's no middle. I wish I could pop this down in the middle. Um, let's put it next to the canteen, maybe. We're going to have a house over here and a house over here. And take a look at how much space that'll take. I'm trying to plan ahead as best as possible. We just have a two. Hmm, that's not enough room, is it? Oh, it is. Okay, cool. Pop you down like so. Good stuff. And that should that should help significantly. That'll, that'll take us up past to 200 already. All right, cool. We time up. Right, there's our benches done. I've left the gap in the middle there for a reason. You'll see shortly. Yeah, once this thing is built, it's got all the resources it needs. So once that's built, we'll have our cultural square, or social district rather, up to uh, past 200. There you go. Now we're talking about housing satisfaction. So again, this I highlighted earlier where there are a few different aspects that people care about. Um, I, 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 I can't read the icons yet. I haven't got the icons memorized, but those are the four that we highlighted earlier, which is why we have people, you know, in the shade and all that kind of stuff, and why we needed the culture, for example, versus something else. Uh, access scores are applied by select buildings to all cells situated within range. For example, the school applies an access buff to surrounding places of knowledge. Uh, this is something to consider as well in terms of placing buildings within certain ranges of each other to make sure that they are making the other ones more efficient. Uh, other than that, right. It gives us a breakdown of uh, uh, of well-being. So there are four different categories of satisfaction, or four different pillars, let's call them, of satisfaction. Uh, one of them is well-being. And so well-being is what's being focused on for the tutorial. Well-being requires vegetation, water points, and shadow coverage. Again, earlier I said how shade is important for well-being. Well, here you have it. Shadow coverage changes uh, the well-being stat, as does access to water and just presence of vegetation in general, I suppose. We can, of course, always take a look at, slow things down over here, the heat map to see what well-being is looking like. And why is it actually not great over here? So we get the five from the uh, the, the the shade, I suppose. And that's that's all we've got. It's actually better up over here, maybe because of the variety of, uh, of plants, the presence of these sharp bushes would make people happier. But hey, we'll work with what we've got and hopefully we'll be able to get the uh, well-being score up to 15 for some of these houses. Let's go ahead. And keep an eye on this, right? So we're at 5 out of 20 for well-being. Let's establish, if I can find it. Mm, there we go. A fountain, a long fountain, right over here between these benches. That's what the plan was. Uh, and that should give us water access. That should take us from 5 up to, well, whatever. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but let's let the uh, feed pick up and see what that does for us. Again, we've got culture access from the fact that this is a cultural square. Socializing and leisure, I believe that's from the canteen. No, sorry, the culture is coming from the canteen. Socializing and leisure, I'm not sure exactly where it's coming from. But with the long fountain completed, we can see the stone house now has 10 well-being. So five from the shade, presumably five from the, uh, the water access. And uh, I guess if we build a scent garden and assign five citizens to it, that'll be the remaining five. So, let's go ahead and find ourselves a scent garden. Uh, where are you, scent garden? There you are. Lots that we have to destroy over there if we want to pop it down there. I guess I could put you down here instead. But initially, I was planning this road would kind of like come out. Ah, I see. Cramping my style, tree. You're cramping my style. If I pop you down over here, I can get some more benches and another fountain down, I suppose. Alright, let's try this. If I put you down there. 
Um, I gotta find my scent garden. There it is. And of course that corner is blocked by a sunshade tree. Let's let's withdraw you. It's a tiny one. It'll be fine. We'll be okay. We'll be fine. Got another fountain down. Like so. The ground medallion down there, because why not? Get some bird's nests. Or actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and get these uh, informative signposts down. They produce culture as well. Why not? Pop one down there. I wish I could pop one that faces the other way, but I can't. So instead, I'll get a bird's nest. Sure. The, the limitations of rotation, I think, are because of the hand-drawn art style, by the way. I think that's why. I think that's why. All right, so that's being built up. A tree is gone. Let's go ahead and get our uh, sand garden. Like so, sure. Falls within this district. We need some seeds for it. All right, here we go. Time to invest in the withdrawing... I suppose, of the riverbank fingers to get some seeds. No other way to do it, eh? Alright. Do I have any particular ones that I want to clear out? Maybe this one? Make some room down over here. Well, let's get you. Let's 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 clear the waterfront out, I suppose. Once that's done, we just need ten. Um I'm maybe overdoing it. Maybe a little bit. It's okay. We'll need some down the line. I should probably establish an infirmary as well. Population. There's the infirmary. Copy down here. Near the water. Or here near the kitchen. Decisions, decisions. Let's put you... Let's put you near the kitchen. Sorry. I keep telling myself I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about exact placement, and then uh, and then I do it. My apologies. Uh, we are lacking moisture pods. What's up? Picker's cabin. Do I need to assign another person? Two available citizens. I mean, I'm going to need some for the, uh, the scent garden, right? So I can't just assign everybody over here. Where else can we pick from? We can pick from some of these instead of pruning them. Sure, let's go. Prioritize this a little bit. Eat time up. Because we can't have people starving. We got a lot of food, but I don't want to rest on my laurels. We only have what? We have less than three cycles worth of food, actually, which isn't a lot of time. That is not a lot of time. These guys are lacking uh, sticks. Interesting. I mean, again, I could go in and, and swap these out. They get uh, pruned, and then I can stop pruning them. I can start picking them instead, because they've already been picked. And there's our scent garden done. Three available citizens. Let's not do that just yet. Let's go ahead and reduce the number over here. Reduce the number over here. Where else? Where else? Canteen has one person. See, if I assign all five citizens of the five that are available, no one's going to be hauling stuff around anymore, so that's not really an option. Uh, I could reduce the pontoon down to just one person, I suppose, bringing this up to five and leaving one citizen um, available for hauling. Once people start working at the scent garden, we'll hit that well-being score of 15. Well, we'll actually be at 16. Great. And if we take a look at the overlay, you can see this hot spot that we've created rather nicely. Time for the call of the unknown. A strange phenomenon is spotted by the citizens. It is a chaotically flashing dot of light, visible only at nightfall. Residents fear it could be a distress signal. Numerous volunteers have come forward to investigate the phenomenon and, if necessary, lead a rescue operation. All that remains is to select the team and equip them for the journey. Six adults have joined. Excellent. That allows us to distribute people um, into some of those slots that we just emptied out, and we're introduced to the idea of research and exploration. Research will help unlock new building effects, such as buffs or new tasks, as well as, of course, new buildings as well. And uh, we have two different themed tech trees. We've got, well, the tech tree itself, and we have the culture tree. 
Uh, the tech tree gives us technological tools, extraction, refining, whereas the culture tree gives us things like socialization and leisure, well-being, and food-focused elements. Uh, we are uh, currently going to focus on, on, on the technology aspect of it to go ahead and explore this chaotic blinking light. World exploration separately will allow us to make important discoveries. That's where the world map gets unlocked, allowing us to find tablets, which will help us unlock technologies instantaneously. It'll help us find new plants, which I assume we can potentially bring back and grow at our little, you know, location. Uh, we'll find resources out there, we'll find new citizens, and we'll find knowledge. I'm not sure if that means, like, in the sense of technology or backstory and, and narrative. Uh, expeditions are neither free nor safe. Citizens who engage in exploration will be forced to make difficult and potentially dangerous choices, though. So you might lose them uh, when they make their way out. All right. Let's hide that. Let's go ahead and build ourselves a Hall of Wisdom. I feel like I'd said where I would put all of our uh, research-related things. I guess it would be here next to the field lab. So let's go ahead and go to Understanding the World and establish our Hall of Wisdom. We have the Research Center available as well. Uh, allowing us to research technological projects versus the Hall of Wisdom, which allows us to research cultural project, projects. Sorry, So I was mistaken. We'll actually be doing a, a cultural project to explore the planet further. Let's pop you down over here behind the uh, field lab. Again, we don't need a direct road connection, so this works just fine. We'll get that built up, and let's go ahead and make sure that this Picker's Cabin actually has an additional couple of citizens assigned to it. Because we are not collecting resources quickly enough. Not nearly quickly enough. These exclamation marks are just letting us know that these are newly constructed buildings, by the way, in case you were wondering what that was about. How are we looking for water? 100 units of clean water per cycle, of course, with our growing population. The, the needs grow as well. Uh, we're in cycle 4. Cycle 5 is okay for collection as well. Cycle 6 is where things are going to be troubling. I think we'll be okay. I think we'll make it through. All right, construction cannot start because we lack bark. Send these pickers out. Pick more of these, get more bark. Important construction material. And speed time up again. Alright. Definitely want to showcase the exploration elements before uh, and before too long, so let's speed time up a bit. Cabbage shrubs. I and mean, we're already collecting vegetables. How are we doing over here? The infirmary. Offers all encompassing treatment, curing all ills suffered by a citizen. They'll need different kinds of medication. You can also choose... Um, what to uh, treat and what not to treat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and not assign anybody here until we need it, uh, but what we do need is housing. We've got five homeless citizens, so over to housing. Pop you down. Line you up. Pop you down there. Pop you down. Damn. I would made a miscalculation, eh? Hang on a second. Can't believe I'm going to destroy you just because of a single step. I mean, I could just get rid of this road. That's the other option. Right, I could just, I could just get rid of this road, and then I could build this house down here. Do I love it? Not necessarily. Am I gonna do it? Yes. <laughs> it was a very hesitant yes. All right. We'll put like a, a fountain or something down over here, maybe. Something to make it a bit more um, palatable. Yeah, sure. Pop a fountain down there. All right. Still waiting on some bark over here. Speed time up. Taking away, hopefully. Or pruning away, I guess. Yeah, good stuff. These guys are collecting, I think, bark. Yep. Good stuff. That'll be built soon enough. We're still lacking some of these moisture pods. Sign some of these. Get out over here. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. New cycle has begun. Still temperate season. Three new children. How does that affect our consumption? 112 units per cycle. Mm. We'll still we'll we'll make it through that uh, dry season, but it still makes me a little nervous, I suppose. I'm up a bit more. Now we're lacking water as well. Is it because we don't have too many free citizens? That could be why. 
That could be why. Going to reduce the number of people at the scent garden. Yeah. We only had one citizen available for hauling, which is obviously not nearly enough, considering how many resources need to be moved back and forth. So this will hopefully help. Uh, I, again, I'm not going to assign anybody to the infirmary until we need uh, until we need the help, which we might do once that dry season hits us. How long until you're done? 50%? Oh, man. This takes its sweet time, eh? Yeah, we'll get this built. We'll build the explorer's hut, and uh, we'll inspect the source of the chaotic blink. Shouldn't take us too long now. Water's looking okay. 112. Food is not looking too hot. Food is not looking too hot at all. Go ahead and pick that as well. These guys are all set for picking. That's good. These guys need to be set for picking as well. Pick you instead. Just barely rescued that. Ooh, hey, more plants that we haven't researched. Whipping gourds. All right, fair enough. There's our Hall of Wisdom. Let's go ahead and research our exploration missions over here. Again, it'll take eight days. That is, of course, if we have all four citizens assigned uh, to research. Get them coming through. Again, you can see 32 days, 16 days, 11 days, and eight days. So they'll get to work. I love the little animations. I love how each building comes to life in a, in a, in a different way. Good stuff. Mountain. You know what? I don't mind this. It's 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 a little chaotic. Oh god. As I said that all the uh no clean water signs went up. We are kind of low on clean water actually. All right, hang on, hang on. Three available citizens. How much water do we have here? We've got 20 there. We got 20 there. We got 27 here. And the cellar has nothing. All right. So that's a problem. That's a problem. Let's get another pontoon going, or maybe let's just assign an additional citizen to this one. That'll hopefully do the trick. One less, two less at the scent garden. That'll be fine. Because the hauling needs to happen quickly as well. That'll hopefully keep us on track. Three days until the research is done. Approximately 22 days until we enter the dry season. All right, fair enough. We got this. We got this. We're okay. I think. But yeah, as chaotic as this looks, I'm actually quite pleased. I mean, it, you know, we got... Why am I upset about there being trees? I should be pleased that there are trees. They're getting in my way. In an ideal world, I'd be able to plan more precisely. And I think that might actually, might, maybe, be a mechanic. Don't quote me. Uh, it'd be an interesting one where you can kind of actually plant based on, you know, meeting the needs of the various uh, uh, flora, right? Like that's that's what this implies to me. And I could be, could be mistaken, but... And then you can actually organize some of this stuff. But it, but but I think we worked well with what we've got over here. Overall. Done. Research completed. Let's go ahead and build our Explorer's Hut. Pop you down. Over here, I suppose. Sure. Line you up with the field lab. You know, research. It's related. Alright, I think we have all the resources we need to actually build it, so we'll just let that happen. Speed time up a little bit. We'll go ahead and inspect this uh, chaotic blink shortly. Yeah, the water, though. Water's a little... Gaze for... As we have 245 clean water. It says so here as well. The, the number in parentheses is how much we have in stock, and you can see the tooltip as well. 235 now. This is 25. This is 18. So is everyone else just like storing water? Is that what that's saying to me? We got 15 water in there. Again, we need water to cook as well, right? So where is that water stored? As long as people have access to it. All right, Explorer's Hut is done. Let's go ahead and explore the world. So when you go on an expedition, you have to choose citizens. The more citizens you have, the more resources they'll need to actually, you know, pull off the expedition, obviously. You know, the same amount of food won't feed twice the people, just logic. Um, but when you send people out, having a larger number of people uh, will give you a large number of options, potentially. There's a higher cost of supply and resources, but you might be able to do more things by having more of those people out there. Now, once you explore a region, you'll be able to do multiple things within that region. So when you see these points of interest, don't think that there's just the one, two, three, four, five points of interest. 
each of these points of interest will unlock additional things around them. Uh, so we're looking for the uh, chaotic blink. Go ahead and assign. We have seven citizens available. I'm just going to send four, I think, so we have three left over to do all the hauling and stuff. Uh, it'll take what? They'll reach their destination after five days, which means they'll be away for ten days total. That sounds good. Start the expedition. We can investigate the expedition, but nothing's happened to it yet. Now, this is the furthest I've gone with this game before. I'm not sure what comes next. I'm quite curious about this chaotic blink. We're going to find out together. But uh, let's speed time up so that it happens a bit more quickly. Ooh, culture tree. An action is available. I suppose I could research something else. I have some citizens assigned to it after all. What would I research? These have already been unlocked. I don't know if they've been pre-unlocked because it's the demo or if, uh, you know, if they will always be pre-unlocked. Um, this is blocked research. I could do education so I can get schools going. And that would lead us to the Spherical Forum, which gives us research. But it costs a lot of tools and something else I don't recognize. Fair enough. Uh, and this is also blocked research. Blocked research locked by a condition. I imagine the condition might be that it's a demo. <laughs> uh, which is fine, which is fine. It's just cool to see what options there are. Ooh, right. And so these are upgrades you can unlock for the uh, for the kitchen. These are the, uh, I recognize the icon. Those are the, uh, not the simple meals. They're not called complex meals. The full meals, whatever they're called. And I guess bread. So cool. Yeah, you can upgrade uh, our our exploration, uh, explorer's hut as well. Don't know what these upgrades are, but, but you can upgrade them. And over here as well, there's an upgrade available. Neat. Uh, let's go ahead and, sure, let's do education, because why not? It'll take 12 days, begin the research. Everyone's assigned, might as well put them to work, right? I mean, I could reduce this a little bit. It'll take a bit longer, 16 days instead. Now we have an extra citizen for all the hauling and stuff, right? Not a bad thing to have. And we should be arriving soon. We're about a quarter of the way there, third of the way there. Not too long now. Still have, oh, do we still have, ah... We have a ton of clean water from our starting storage. That's what's up. Okay, that's where all that's coming from. All right. I'll use it, obviously. I'm more than happy to. The prepared food count, though, is... Uh, that's low. I don't like that. We're maxed out in the kitchen. I could change to a different simple meal. Hmm. Out of seeds, perhaps? Because we do have... Oh, we only have 10 seeds in stock. Forget that. Back to the traditional. We already got these stuff in store. These these things in storage. Might as well stick with that. But we're out of moisture pods. Why? I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm sending people out way too wide. I think what might be optimal is to have multiple pickers cabins and have them focus on certain regions. That might be the better call. But the expedition has arrived at its destination. Let's see what's going on here. Filaments of light. In the bed of what must once have been a fierce torrent, the explorers follow the light signal they spotted from the city. It leads all the way to a cavern's mouth. While not imposing, something about this cavern provokes mixed feelings of suspicion and curiosity. The cold air emanating from its attractive... Rather, sorry. The cold air emanating from it is attractive for the first thirsty travelers, but remains the omen of a particular strangeness. Crossing the cavern's narrow threshold, the explorer's path stops sharply when they find themselves faced with a rectangular dace? Dice? Dace? I never know how to say this word. The cracks on each of its sides light up in an irregular fashion, a chaotic blinking that the explorers can't begin to rationalize. Stranger still, the rays of light seem to persist in the air for a few moments, even with no dust or other surface to refract them. These pieces of ephem... Oh, God. Ephemeral... E e Every once in a while I can get this word right. Uh, F F F anyway, these pieces of fancy color exude a glacial temperature when touched with one's hand. This extraordinary phenomenon forces its way even through a closed door. What would happen if it was opened? Whatever may be contained behind this dace is bound to be volatile and dangerous, but the explorers are torn. After all, given the town's climactic conditions, it's impossible to put a price on a potential cooling device. What's more, this pragmatic argument conceals a curiosity that would win the day on its own. No one here wants to leave before formulating a hypothesis on this phenomenon. Which approach will you choose? I mean, we only have one option here, force the way open, but typically 
we'll have clearly a multitude of options if it applies, uh, but let's go ahead and force the way open. By using levers and improvised wheels to move the dace, this word's going to keep coming up and haunt me, the explorers succeed in clearing the way. As the remarkably thick stone leaves its slot, the antechamber fills with cold air and strings of light rest waist weightlessly around the explorers' heads, their colors shifting so quickly that every person's eyes can only perceive a blinding whiteness. Enter. The ray's origins quickly become obvious. A spherical space at the center of the cavern, which is otherwise in complete darkness, emits its own internal light. The explorers initially assume this to be a kind of lantern, imbued with a mechanical function and a palpable physical form. But there's no touching this globe. Just as with the rays, its image persists in the air through some untold phenomenon. It's difficult to look at, and harder still to comprehend what it depicts. The explorers' eyes grow red with the effort, and yet they can't tear their eyes away. Outside, a vigil awaits his teammate's return. He will wait half the night before deciding to abandon his post and running to meet his brethren. Neither he nor his friends will leave the cavern. Wait, did I just lose all four of these uh, expedition members? The explorers, plural, assume this to be a kind of lantern. Outside, a vigil awaits his teammates' return. So one person survives? I guess? Well, we're about to find out. I guess they gotta make their way back before we know what came of them. Curious. Very strange. Mortal risk. We've lost our exploration team while searching for the light signal on the horizon. Their last contact reveals nothing of what they might have learned. We live in a dangerous and largely misunderstood world. Exploring it will take time, precious resources, and in moments, a deadly amount of risks. Once we've recovered our strength after this tragedy, we could launch a new exploration effort in the neighboring provinces, and perhaps even discover what became of our lost friends. Well, that's this. That what? <laughs> I got I got led astray there. City prosperity score reflects on the sustainability and well-being of your city, based with the challenges presented by the surrounding world. This score is updated at the end of each cycle. Why is the F cut off in some of these cases? It's been throwing me off. Like reflects. Based, it's like there's a layer up top there that's cutting it off or something. Because this F is fine. Anyway, uh, it's made up of the sum of all district scores with a buff for every district type built and the sum of all housing satisfaction scores. A debuff is then applied according to the number of homeless, sick, or dead citizens. In doing so, the score reflects your city's overall resilience. I highlighted this earlier. We're at 727, which beats the 500 we were supposed to be targeting, so we're good there. And that's where it ends? No! I want to know what happened to those people! Oh, man. I mean, I guess I could continue, but I suspect we won't actually find out uh, what happens next in the narrative. The beginnings of prosperity. The community that seemed doomed only a short while ago is experiencing new growth. For all its dangers, the world is no longer just seen as a threat. It is also an open door. But everyone knows that at the first sign of complacency, our infrastructure will collapse under unforeseen events and the growing demands of our community. We must increase our understanding of the natural realm in order to render it predictable in all its unpredictabilities. Fortunately, we are not the only ones facing this task. A new movement aims to recreate links between isolated camps and share humanity's body of knowledge between them. Their steps must follow ours. Perhaps they will be able to illuminate the destiny of our explorers lost where we failed. So, that's Synergy, folks. I find this to be, again, an absolutely gorgeous game with some very interesting differentiators. The whole ecological focus I find to be absolutely fascinating. It really doubles down on some of those concepts, and I'm curious to see how much further the game pushes those concepts in the full build whenever it you know, releases. Uh, hopefully I'll get my hands on that a little early to showcase it further on the channel too. But this, folks, was the Next Fest demo, which you'll be able to check out when Next Fest kicks off uh, on the 5th of February, I believe. Again, if you like what you see here, folks, please don't hesitate to go and wishlist the game on Steam. It makes a very big difference for independent developers, especially because of, again, how visibility works on Steam. And apart from that, if you enjoyed this video, if you'd like to see more like it, you might want to consider liking and subscribing. Apart from that, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.